Namaste. <laughs> so here we are at uh, about 6,500 feet <laughs> and surrounded by nothing but green forest and natural beauty. So I'm very thankful. Uh, somehow, I guess some good luck karma has come up, and here I am. <laughs> I'm just deliriously happy. I mean, really. Here, the devotees here, the tantrikas, just accept me completely, you know. They know I'm, uh, how could I say, a little eccentric. <laughs> <laughs> but because I'm a good devotee and a nice person, they don't mind. So this is the way of life up in the mountains, actually the foothills of the mountain, Himalaya. And uh, the only reason it has survived so nicely is because of the inaccessibility. Um, you can't develop hillsides like greater than 30 degrees, you know. <laughs> so here there are so many terraced farms and so many springs and like that. So uh, the people that run the world don't want you to know about this. They don't want you to know that if you don't destroy the nature, you can live very simply and easily natural life. All the food we are eating is grown naturally without fertilizer except cow dung, uh, no pesticides, any of that nonsense, and locally. And you know, like last night we had two different kinds of chapatis with butter and buttermilk and milk and uh, all kinds of vegetables and everything grown in this valley. So, uh, and the people, my God, everybody is just so friendly, and they like to see Western sadhu <laughs> everywhere I go. It's like the old days. I went to the school. Uh, their son, Aditya, my good friend, who brought me here, he's a senior there. And so I came to the school, and like the whole school had to come out and, <laughs> and say hello. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they respect very much my Adi Guru, Bhaktivedanta Swami. And they also like that I'm a practicing sadhu. I'm not just a theory sadhu. <laughs> I'm actually doing. So they like to see that. And uh, if you've been following our videos lately, we're talking about Tantra and the path that here we see a society that it's in balance with environment, it's sustainable. Um, there hasn't been any major change in hundreds of thousands or thousands of years. And everything is going along quite nicely. In fact, a little modernization is nice, but I can foresee, given the macroeconomic and, and climatological climatological changes that we're going through, that this area is also going to be overrun by uh, climate refugees, uh, which will make for short-term prosperity, but long-term ecological problem. Um, still, the next 10 years are going to be golden here uh, for the people here and for anyone who gets invested here. So. I just want to give a short tour of the house and a few minutes interview with my host here. So this is the house where I'm staying. Yeah. And this is my host. Yeah. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Rade, Rade. And everything here, as you can see, is completely gorgeous. <laughs> evening, evening time, walking my village. Evening time. Ah. 
go to my village. Acha, we we'll yeah. see yeah. The, your neighbors. Radhe Radhe Bhajan, Bhajan oh. Mandali. Oh, yeah. Ha. yeah. Jee haan. Evening time. Okay. Yeah. He, uh, he rest, he, he rest this. Hmm? After, after lunch rest, uh -huh. village. Acha. Evening. Evening, Chalega. evening time village. Uh -huh. Yeah. Take. Now here we are walking down. Beautiful birds. View is just insane. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is the garden. This is squash. Uh-huh. And over there, corn. And then here, cucumber. And what's this? Green pepper? This green, green chili. Green chili, yeah. Green chili. Nice. And uh, what could what ba could this be? Ba <laughs> ba <laughs> <laughs> A nice one. Wow. So we have bhang pakora, and this. We'll see. Tulsi? I never see this yeah, kind of Tulsi. This is Ram Tulsi. Ram Tulsi. Huh. Yeah. This. Yeah. Oh. Um, very good for devotion. Yeah. One cow is here? No. All cows out. All cows out. Oh, oh, oh. All cows out. Oh, cha -cha. Yeah. Corn is getting big. It's corn, corn. Nice. Soon corn coming. So here we are on top. This is a Mosambi tree. The lemon-like fruits, they'll be ready in a couple of months. And of course, more garden. And this is one kitchen. Big kitchen, water heating and like that. All wood. This is where I do yoga in the morning. And this is great grandma. Namaste, Grandma. This is a house. And these are two kitchens. One wood kitchen. This one. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see. Wood fire in the corner. Like that. And they also have gas kitchen, but they never use. <laughs> a modern gas kitchen. But not using. We all like the flavor wood cooked food. Much more flavor. Then in the back, <laughs> the back side, this is the bathhouse. Toilet is on the right, shower is on the left. This is a spring head, the natural spring. 24 hour running. Huh. 24 hour running. All year? Yeah, all year. Never dry? Never dry. Acha. Yeah. And uh, more mamas and papas. <laughs> 24 hour running. Yeah. yeah. Even there's too much is going on the garden, I see. You take some water put to garden. Garden. Yeah, yeah. there's pipe? Yeah. The tube going? Pipe going. Okay. Yeah, and this is wonderful to do yoga here in the morning chant Vishnu Sahasranam and worship sun for health. So this is this the way the devotees live, the real authentic Vaishnava, Brahmana, Tantrika devotee. And I'm very fortunate to be their guest. This is called Siddhasana. Siddhasana, if you can perfect this posture with spine completely straight and sit and meditate, then automatically Kundalini will rise. As long as there's no psychological blocks, grantis and all that. <clears throat> the problem is most people, especially in the West, aren't stretched out in their legs. And so they cannot sit comfortably like this for a long period of time. Um, so to get like this, you have to do some other asanas, especially Vijayasana, 
Vijayasana, like this. See, this stretches out the hips and the legs, you know. Then you can easily sit. Huh? And also Padmasana. Padmasana will stretch your legs beyond the point that you need for Siddhasana. So it's a good way to loosen up for Siddhasana and make it completely comfortable and easy. A uh, good seat is a key to good meditation because then it's stable. You don't have to worry, you know, about uh, falling over <laughs> or anything. And you can do uh, meditation in that pose pretty much effortlessly because when the spine is perfectly straight, Kundalini just goes right up, you know. Uh, of course, if you have the right mindset and all that. Huh? So uh, being here is really the best <laughs> environment for this kind of yoga, you know, and especially the temples. In the temples, you can attain concentration very easily because the worship has been going on there for hundreds or thousands of years. So the atmosphere is very, very peaceful, stable, stress-free, like that, happy. People are happy in temples, you can see uh, from the videos, uh, short videos I've shared. So uh, what else? Well, I want to show you around the place. I want to show you around the house and see uh, how we're living up here. And um, <laughs> it's just so wonderful. I'm having a great time. And it's very healing. Uh, you know, last year or so, I've had some sciatica problems. And uh, the, the influence of the temples and the fresh air and water, clean food, good people, plenty of rest and uh, uh, yoga every day in the sun. And uh, I'm getting better. Health is improving, like, automatically. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here. And I wish... I could spend the rest of my life up here in the hills living like this uh, because this is really kind of place where I belong. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.